with me, Steve Stevie Cresselis, Cresselius, I believe is right, and his wife, uh, or her wife, Debbie, are joining us from Denver. Stevie, I want you to take me back to that day when you went to the hospital and got the shocking news. What did you think? What did you go through when you get home? I, I just take me through that day. Well, I, had, <clears throat> I really had two feelings. One was it just totally validated how I'd always felt all my life. And I was also very frightened because I was afraid uh, Debbie was in the, in the emergency room there with me and was so afraid that she'd hurt that because it was a, a secret that I was going to take to my grave. So you, you already knew that you were intersex, as we call it, is that correct? I always knew that I felt female. I always related to female. I, um, but you were a cop. When I was you went to a very a masculine child, profession. I, you were a cop at one point, right? Yes, but as a child I knew that I was female and I wore my mom's makeup. I, I don't have a memory of myself looking in the mirror without makeup on. And so it was really that struggle of trying to figure out how to present myself in, in, in the world. In the 60s, when there was no internet or no support system, I was totally alone with this. And so uh, by my 12th year, I'm like trying to figure out how to kill myself because I just don't fit in. And by 13, after failing at that, I, I never even tried. I just couldn't do it. And by 13, my only escape, my only uh, way of coping was to create this male persona that uh, people knew as Steve, and Steve set out to be the best, best man he could be. And Debbie, what did you think when you heard this news there in the emergency room? I thought, you know, that explains everything. I, since Stevie and I were very first together, I'd always had this gut feeling that there was something more. And, uh, uh, at that time, he was very effeminate. Uh, Debbie, did, did you like that uh, quality? Is that why you're still with Stevie now that he is uh, presenting as female? What I liked was his, his talent, his creativity, uh, his sensitivity, uh, logic caring, that those were the things that I fell in love with. Stevie, how did you tell six children about this massive change? Well, it's a second marriage for us, so, um, I mean, they're not my six children. But Stevie, um, Stevie, these are six, they're, 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 you, you're they're in the emergency room, hang on, so you're in the emergency room, you find out something rather startling, it made sense to you, I get it, but you have six, you have a family that knows you as dad. You've got to go home now and decide, I imagine, do I go female or do I stay with this male persona? And what's it going to do to my family, right? Um, well, I think effectively what, what happened was we went home and, and Debbie brought this up um, because uh, I wasn't, again, I wasn't going to ever tell her. And how do you tell your kids? Well, gosh, dad's really a, a female. So that never entered my mind. That was never a possibility. That was not something I allowed to think about, allowed myself to think about. But eventually you did. How, so my question Debbie is, how really, did you do that? That's incredible. We did that together, one at a time. Each, each kid is different. And there's, there's no her kids, my kids. There's, there's our kids. And each one is each one is different, and each one there's there's a way we had to tell them. I, but Debbie, we're and talking about this we like we're one talking about at a, a time. I, I get that, and, and we're talking about this as so though we're talking mm -hmm. about a, a NASA experiment or something. These are people's lives, everybody in this family, deeply shifting because of this. If if I were a dad and had to tell my children something profound about my life or who I was, I, it would be extremely extraordinary wasn't it incredibly I emotional most of those conversations uh, it was incredibly emotional and in, in fact I was usually curled up in a little ball and couldn't even talk and usually Debbie had to talk or uh, I mean it, it's it's just an incredible incredibly difficult thing to do but, I mean it, it was it scared just us told to you and that's on why this? we waited five years almost to tell them I get yeah, you. I mean before you Pardon? even got to the point of telling the children how did your marriage survive? How did you two decide how you were going to relate to one another? Because I see marriages falling apart 
over you know Facebook pressure or, or and, toothpaste, and, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you you you've survived something <laughs> extraordinary. Tell me how that that happened. Well, we almost didn't. You know when when we first when I first dug this out of Stevie, and I you know I was raised in a very tolerant family, and what I said is okay. We'll go shopping. But about a year and a half into this, I, I, I started to mourn the loss of my husband. Mm -hmm. I was losing him. There we go. I had lost him. Yes, that's right. And I, you know, I told her, I didn't sign on for this. I did not sign on for this. But then you did. And. But then I, I thought about it and I thought, okay, who in the world signs on for anything? What does death till death do us part mean? It's, it, and even that was a struggle. I, you know, who signs on for cancer? Mm -hmm. Who signs on for their partner to become a paraplegic, I, a I get that. I get who, that, Debbie, but, but know? Let, let me, I, I get all that. And I, but I, I have a feeling that there was that, that part that Stevie was pushing down, that female part. And by the way, let me do, we haven't even defined yet what intersex is. Let me do that for people. In all probability, Stevie, correct me if That's I'm wrong, hang great. on. Probably Stevie was a basically two what we call gametes, like, the, like f embryos, fetuses, before they were fetuses, they come together one has the female hormones, female chromosomes, the other has the male, and they intertwine like a conjoined twin that doesn't ever separate. It just gets completely intermingled. Would that be right, Stevie? Well, I'm not a doctor, but, I, but, but intersex conditions impact as many as one in 100 people, and one in 2,000 babies are born with what's medically termed ambiguous genitalia, which really I, means... I, I understand that. You can't look at their... their I, I understand that. I just but, want to get you to... look at their... I just want people to understand what you're dealing with, which but is different people, cells in your body have different know. chromosomes. Some are male, some are female. So even in your brain, there are male That's and correct. female cells That's in there. Correct. So this feminine part of you, you were pushing down, you were compensating with a male persona. I have a feeling that Debbie really, really liked that, that feminine part of you. I've watched you guys on this screen here, we have said in our studio, and you guys have a deep... A, a deep connection and a real cute tenderness we've been watching. So there's something there, Debbie, that you probably already liked and like a lot now. Am I wrong? Well, I, you know, I do. She is still the same person I married. Right. Right. That's right. Uh, just different. Uh, okay. All right. So as far as, uh, as far as liking that feminine side, I. Debbie's heterosexual. I'm, I mean, yeah. so, I, I, so, I, know, I know. I will get into that. I want to get into that. I, yeah, that's and that's the interesting okay. part for us all. We, and, and Judge Toller wants to talk about maybe what can be learned for other marriages. If you Absolutely. Get I mean, I would like. I mean, whoever signs on for. I love that phrase yeah. because these days people don't sign on for much.